Hello farmers, welcome back to Green Mountain Forest. The fifth day of spring has arrived. We are feeding our animals. And I had just enough TMR to feed the cows this morning. Got to make some, uh, let's see, it's going to be the first day of summer. They're going to require some more TMR, so have to mix them up. Uh, the snow is still hanging around a little bit, but the ground temperature has risen quite a bit. I think we went up, what, 10 degrees in one day, which is pretty darn good. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I went around and fertilized the areas that I um, I needed to fertilize, meaning uh, what would help us when we seed. So a couple of the fields, like where the cornfield was, I uh, fertilized that, and also fertilized where uh, what do we have over here? Uh, oats. It was actually oats. So where the grass was, where we extended the fields. It already has 66% fertilization, so I don't need, need to really spend my time fertilizing here because when we seed the grass in, that will uh, make it 100%. And over here now, we are only at 33% because we only got one stage of fertilization in. So yeah, spread fertil fertilizer down here uh, where the corn field was, uh, where we're going to probably put corn again. Um, let's see what else has gone on. Oh, I also, uh, Wayne called last night and... Yeah, I bought a lime spreader, and they had one just across the road. And wham, there it is. We got our lime spreader. We're going to be doing that very next uh, thing. Uh, what else has changed? Anything else has changed? Uh, not so much. Just that the snow's me snow has melted, and uh, we're ready to get to work. Put some lime down, and hopefully should be able to get the grass put down here today because the temperature is warm enough for grass. It's actually warm enough for a lot of crops, but the problem is uh, I'm only one man, and we only got one seed drill. And also on the seed drill, I did call into the company that we bought the seed drill from last year. And I inquired about maybe getting a, uh, a wider one. Uh, just because we're getting, we're, we got so many much bigger fields now. So, and I got little time to really get this stuff planted. Uh, actually, I got a lot of time to plant it. The problem is, the later we plant it, the later it's ready for harvesting. And as we can see, the traffic is up and going. Um, the other thing I have noticed today, and I think uh, here it comes, is there is now a bus going around here. So we're getting some public transportation, I suppose. Yeah, I don't see anyone in the bus at the moment, but um, yeah, public transportation. Uh, with the furniture factory, the carton factory, uh, the sawmill. I think we're just better off having people being transported down by uh, bus rather than drive down, down by themselves. Uh, Lane's going to be happy. We're going to get some lime from her today. Lime is not that expensive, but uh, I'm going to be getting 18,000 liters of it, so <laughs> our bank account's going to go down. Also, the other thing, uh, the uh, the John Deere harvester that we used last fall, I think uh, Wayne said something about the other farmers going to drop it off at the shop today. So, yeah, the Case uh, International harvester that we had, um, he's already come and picked it up at the, the vehicle shop down the road, so that's gone, so... Uh, right now, there's not a harvester on site anywhere, which is fine. We're not ready for harvesting anyways. So, uh, I did trans transfer over the $100,000 more. Paid it off to the other farmers, so we're all set on that. The only thing I'm going to want to do is now i got to pay to have that uh, our headers repainted. Just to match the John Deere harvest that we have now, rather than the Case International. So, let's uh, jump back over here to where our grass field will be. And also, I've been told, and we are going to try it, that even when we cut, at, cut our grass and it's dry grass, if we tet it, it might cut our drying time still in half. So that has been an issue here that we've had is our grass. It doesn't dry fast enough or at all. So hopefully that uh, we'll get a tether next time. Uh, this Now we got a grass field. We will definitely go ahead and tet it next time. Uh, do you want to unfold there? There we go. I'm hitting the wrong button. That's why I won't unfold. Now, I thought about buying a fertilizer spreader, but right now, let's we'll keep the one that we have. And just use that, because I would like to get one with narrow narrows on it. Just that the problem is, uh, trying to find a big fertilizer spreader with narrow tires on it, it's kind of hard because, well, uh, that's a lot of weight you got back there. I don't need to lime the whole field because we limed that field over there last year, but this is all new field here, so we need to go ahead and lime this. 
And then, of course, we got all of our fields over that we did uh, last time. All those need lime because those are no f new fields as well. But before we go ahead and do that, though, we're going to go ahead and lime this. And then we're going to grab our seed drill and plant it right away. I don't think that it makes a difference if I plant it in the morning or afternoon. But I just want to get the grass in. Uh, the grass is kind of important because I would like to... And, yeah, this is the part. I would like to uh, turn this kind of into a dairy farm. So, in order to do that, we need more cows. In order to do that, I need more hay. This is where this grass field is going to come in very crucial later on in the season. I'm hoping that we get an early uh, cut out of this field. Maybe late summer, early fall. Even if it's not 100%, uh, I'll cut it as soon as we can. Just that the grass will have a chance to grow a little bit before winter gets here and that way when spring arrives next year it's already at a growth stage and uh, that way we can cut it in summer when drying time is the best so yeah not much lime used here at all but then that's to be expected it's kind of a small field let's drive up and over to our other our other shed that's where we left our seed roll I'm just checking some things out here uh, I gotta figure out when we buy the tether where to go ahead and put that Just double check for traffic because, yeah, traffic is flowing pretty darn good here today. Yeah, so almost all the snow has gone. Funny to say that on the fifth day of spring, but the snow is still hanging around. I think the temperatures will get kind of warm today, so I, any snow that is hanging around probably will be gone by the end of the day. Just a guess. Let's go ahead and just park our spreader right here because we got a good amount of fields of spread. And it's the same thing with these fields here. Now it's funny. Now this field here only has 33% fertilization down. I, I don't understand. I, I guess I'm not quite understanding. I mean the other, the other field was just grass and I plowed it in to make a field and I got 66% fertilization. We did the same thing here and I only got 33% fertilization. I don't understand the difference, uh, but it is what it is. We'll, we'll go ahead and take care of it. All right, so let's go grab our seed drill. And we'll get the grass in. Actually, what I should do is, yeah, since that's only at 33%, I should fertilize that, then put the lime down, and then when we seed it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I miscalculated what fields need to be fertilized and which ones did not. All right, um, this may have a hard time hitching up. No, it's fine. It's all fine. And I'm going to get around without hitting the header. Yep. All right, so let's go visit Elaine so I can get some more seed. Now, the only issue I may have with the seed drill, I'm inquiring if they have bigger ones, is, yeah, the road. Uh, traffic is going to be kind of an issue. So I'll just have to pull over if traffic comes along. Because traffic does not really like to stop for me at all. Because these seed drills do not fold up. I want to say this is a 5 meter. Uh, yes, I would like some seed. I really don't need fertilizer, but... Mm, yeah, I'll top it off with fertilizer. If I don't, uh, I may regret it. Uh, a little bit of fertilizer and let's get this over to grass uh nope come on grass where are you there we go and let's go plant some grass in the good news is uh for feeding the sheep uh the grass in their field is starting to grow so they're getting the, their grass from their pasture alone so that's less to maintain cows the same and yeah the sheep are producing some wool they got like 2,000 liters of wool which is not bad for the amount of sheep that we have oh that I left that down huh okay let's go ahead and turn that on and we'll get our grass in yeah originally when I started out here about a year ago last season uh, we were talking about keeping all the equipment kind of small and over the last year to this year, we made those fields. And wow, those fields are coming out bigger than I thought they were. 
So I'm thinking, ooh, maybe I need, I might need to go up to a bigger size. So we'll see how it goes. It's not, money's not an issue anymore here. It was the first season, uh, but now selling all the logs that we have, uh, yeah, we got tons of cash. And there's going to be tons more cash brought in because we are not even close to being done cutting down trees. Yeah, once we get all these fields taken care of uh, in the next day or two, he says, uh, yeah, it's off down to the beach and start cutting down some trees, uh, start doing some construction work, and Shane will get in there. And uh, we'll start putting in some luxury homes, I suppose uh, you might want to call them. Um, but I do have an option. There's a there's another company that came to me and they would like to open up a business here. The problem with their business is they need some uh, waterfront property. So I got to figure out how to accommodate them and see how they can fit in here. Uh, I don't know if they'll fit down at the beach. I do have a, an option. The problem is with that option is I'm not even close to even being down there yet. So... I gotta look into that as well. It's hard being a farm owner and a county manager of your own county, if you will. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, I gotta, gotta take care of all this stuff on the side. And this is the worst time of the year trying to do all that stuff. It's spring. Uh, I gotta get all this, these crops in as quickly as we can. Cause like I said, it is already the fifth day of spring. So that really means in like eight or nine days from now, it, it, it'll be harvest season, but our crops won't be ready until like the fourth. I think the fourth day of fall before they'll be ready. Yeah, so I'm kind of excited about getting this grass, expanding this grass field and actually making it a field field. We'll actually get a better yield out of it. And then once you plant grass, you really don't have to worry about it after that. You won't have to put down lime. Uh, you'll just have to fertilize it uh, when it's needed. We get a better yield out of it, which means more hay or more grass, and hopefully more hay out of it. Yeah, straw is not going to be a problem for our cows. Uh, let's see, silage, we can take care of that real easy. I mean, if I don't cut enough grass around here, we can always plant corn and chaff it on up. It's the hay that we're a little bit slow on. Don't get me wrong, I got plenty of hay to get me through the season. But if I'm going to add more cows, then I'm definitely going to need more hay. So I'd rather not go see Wayne. Not Wayne. Uh, yeah, Dwayne. Sorry. Man, these three brothers are starting to get me confused. I uh, don't want to go see Dwayne at the barn to buy more hay bales. I'd rather be the one selling him bales. So yes, I am kind of looking into getting a, a bigger seed drill. I mean, this one's not bad, don't get me wrong. For fields this size, that's fine. But uh, we're, since we're expanding the farm and the fields are getting bigger. And we're trying to get all the fields seeded within a day or two. So when fall comes, harvest faster. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a time crunch issue that we're dealing with here. The winter's... Uh, the winter's hang around quite a while here in the Green Mountain Forest. It was actually yesterday, the fourth day of spring, that the ground temperatures finally got above freezing. So halfway through spring, we can't even do nothing for field work because the ground's frozen. And then, of course, winter. We've been kind of lucky with winter not starting early. So our harvest season has been, we've been lucky with that so far. Of course, we've only had two seasons. This is our third. And, of course, our first season, we didn't have any crops. What's, I mean, last year was the only harvest year. So I'm only basing it on one year so far. Now, like I said, I, I would also like to do some potatoes this year. But, yeah, there's a but. Uh, let's see how, how we get along here in the next well, half a day or so. 
Um, be nice if we lower the seed drill peanut. That always helps you out. Yeah, so our summer is going to be, uh, once we get these fields all taken care of, uh, we'll be taking our tree harvester down to the beach and start clearing out some land. I probably am going to have to purchase some land, but the land's not going to be that expensive. I keep saying it's not going to be that expensive uh, just because we got $1.5 million. So by the time I buy the land, I probably be, be below a million, which is not a big deal because yeah, we're going to be selling tons of trees again. But then I got to talk to Shane to figure out uh, how we're going to do the houses down there. Am I just going to lease the land or am I going to pay for the houses and then uh, charge rent in the houses? I don't know how many houses we're even going to put down there yet. I got to, you know, I think it's, we just got to figure out once we uh, start cutting down the trees and figuring out how to put in roads. It's, it's not flat land down there either, which is good and bad. I mean, if you have flat land, then only the houses right in the lakefront can get a good view. Uh, by having a hill around it, it allows the houses behind the uh, front row of houses to get a view of the lake as well. It's going to be interesting. Uh, just like it seems like every day here, for the most part, is interesting. Although the winters kind of drag on a little bit because the only thing we do in the winter is cut down trees. And we've cut down our fair share of trees. I think we're approaching near 4,000 trees that we've cut down so far. I have gotten pretty decent with the tree harvester. And when I first started, I through my years of farming simulator 13, 15, 17, 19, um, I probably only cut down maybe like 500 trees, so not many. Uh, but once I got here, yeah, I was starting to become pretty good at it. Yeah, someone did tell me that uh, they only do it in first person. I tried cutting down trees in first person, and I was terrible at it. But it's like anything, you practice enough or do something enough in, in a certain way, you get pretty darn good at it, son. Imagine if I did it in first person. After a while, I get good at it. The problem is you guys will have to watch me try to do it in first person for a while. And, um, yeah, you'd be banging your head on your desk trying to think, man, I can't watch this. And I'd be, like, in the tree harvest saying, yeah, I can't do it either. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to start practicing off camera when I, when I cut them off camera. So, I hope this grass grows... Or at least germinates by tomorrow. Like I said, probably when this grass hits 66% this year. Hopefully it's uh, by late summer. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it a good give it a good mow. And then uh, if it's dry grass, I'm going to tet it anyways. And hopefully that it dries a lot quicker. Yeah, in the summer it seems like it dries. I think it took like, what, 12, 18 hours for it to dry? In the fall, it doesn't seem like our grass dries no matter what. I mean, we had our grass down for almost over a day. And it was good drying weather and the grass still didn't dry. Or excuse me, it didn't turn to hay. It was dry grass, never turned to hay. Well, there we go. There is our grass field taken care of. At least I think it's taken care of. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And we'll bring it up over to our other fields. Uh, there's a little piece here I can see that I missed. If I don't, that'll be nice and brown. Let's go ahead and take care of it. There we go. Yeah, the ground temperature is actually warm enough to actually put potatoes in. I'm not I'm not really set up for potatoes at the moment. Just don't have any of the equipment and let the bus get out of here. So I can get on through. Yeah, I really don't have the equipment for it. Uh, 
but that's not the issue. I think the issue is uh, the time that I do, ha I don't have, I should say. Maybe I should be planting these fields here to get them started, the smaller fields. Wouldn't be a bad idea. And then I, then I can work on the bigger fields in the afternoon. Uh, let me get my tablet out here. Let's go to here. Uh, uh, yeah, the ground temperature is just warm enough for wheat, barley, and oats, uh, canola, sunflowers, potato, sugar beet, poplar. Yeah, what, I mean, uh, ground temperature is very marginal for a lot of this stuff. Uh, what's the temperature is going to be like for the rest of the, uh, minimum temperature, 62, uh, 51. So, yeah, it's not going to get too cold tonight either. The ground temp uh, So the ground temperature shouldn't drop at all. It should only get warmer. Um, boy, sunflowers. It would be nice just to drop in some sunflowers. Although I don't like this short season of sunflowers. The fifth and sixth day of spring harvest only two days in the fall. If the weather's bad for two straight days, I could have some problems. I don't really like, I don't really enjoy seeing that. Uh, I don't want to lose a crop. I mean, if I, you know what? Let's just plant it here. We'll plant some flowers here. If it doesn't, you know, I'm not worried about losing cash. Uh, does this plant some flowers? It does. Perfect. Yeah, so I only got two days. And, and the worst comes to worst. If we miss a harvest and they, uh, they wither, well, then we'll just go ahead and cultivate it or plow it in. And I'll get it like a stage of fertilization out of it. Yeah, so I thought I was going to go over and take care of those three big fields, but I think we'll do that uh, in the afternoon hour. So, yeah, the rest of the morning we'll just see this field and we'll see the house, uh, yeah, see the house, see the field over by Elaine's house and get that one all taken care of. And that way I can just focus on those three fields across the way. Um, somebody left a Volvo truck in a trailer parked here. I mean, who, who did that? All right, I will turn off the seed roll because safety third. And let's go ahead and just move this. Now this logging trailer, which is on the Giants Mod Hub, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, I had the, the original logging mod trailer. I think it was like the first mod I downloaded for FS19. And it worked rather well. It worked fine for me. I just stuck with it until recently. And I was like, people were like, you should get the, uh, the mod on the Mod Hub. It works so much better. It's by the same author, but um, yeah, he had a lot of improvements on it, and yep, definitely liking it much more. Just saved me trips back and forth to the sawmill because we've made many. Now I don't need any oats, but what I should be doing, and I think we'll be doing over the three fields, is I need to be putting down some cereal cereal crop just to get the straw. Uh, I can store the straw and or sell the straw. But I'm trying to do variety here in the farm. Yeah, so I think... I think what we'll do is either canola or soybeans on the next field. And then, of course, the three fields over here, I talked about it many times. One's going to be corn... Because that is like the main crop that we usually grow up here. Uh, and then I probably will do something like wheat and or barley. I'm actually thinking some wheat. And I don't know if the third field is going to be potatoes or not. I have to really think about it. I think when I get to the final field, I'll make my decision. So yeah, those two fields over there. The first one will be corn like we had last season. Uh, next one over will be wheat so I can get a good amount of straw. It looks like I got a stump there that I have missed. And then the third field will be decided when I get there. Oh, it just feels really good to be back to farming on this map. I don't mind cutting down trees, but it seems like uh, when you cut down trees for like seven, eight days in a row, it's like, hmm. All right. And I'm not going to mind it when I get down to the beach, I don't think, because... Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of interested to even see how the beach comes out myself. I, I'm not quite sure how it's going to come out and how we are going to put all those uh, houses down there.
It's just going to be a long process of cutting down trees, removing the trees, cutting up the stumps, and trying to get the lay of the land. And then trying to fit all the things I want to fit down at the beach to work. And plus, like I said, I do have a factory that wants to go in, but it needs waterfront property. So either I give them a spot down at the beach, or there is another option, but um, I don't know if I'm... That would mean... That, that'd be like a winter project, I think, I'd have to do. Alright, did I decide what I was putting in the field over by lanes? I already forgot. Did I say soybean or did I say canola? I think I said uh, canola or soybean, whatever comes up first on the on the seed drill options. Uh, soybean comes up next, so I guess we're going to put in some soybean. I may have said canola. Deal with it. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of oats to feed our horses or feed uh, the horses that we are taking care of. I should also head on down because I really haven't been down there at all this spring is we took care of the forest in front of the factories down there and I haven't been down there really to see how the how it looks with the trees and the leaves growing in uh, so maybe we'll take a trip down there in the Puma after we're done just to see how it looks I mean the leaves are, have grown in quite a bit Ooh, we got some weeds growing in already well okay the weeds couldn't wait two minutes now could they Um, wait, soybean... Wait, was the temperature warm enough for soybean? No, it's not, you idiot. Man, that's why I said, I said canola. Uh, probably a lot of you were screaming at the computer already, saying, uh, no, it's not warm enough for soybean. I, I think I've done this before. I think I can see back over what I've put down and it will it will accept it it should and I probably won't have to worry too much about the soybean growing up through because in theory the seeds should not even germinate they should die but in seasons though I sense the next day is going to be rather warm and the ground temperature is going to rise my guess is the soybean may have actually worked. I may have lost quite a bit of it uh, during germination, and it could have. Uh, fro uh, what's not? It's not actually called frozen. And it's not withered. Uh, it just failed to germinate. Really, is what probably would have happened. So, seeing how it goes with our grass field this year will determine uh, when we put down another cow pasture. Uh, the next cow barn we put down will be a rather big one, just so we can do a lot of milk production. And the one up at the little farm up here will be for meat production. Right, just because I am curious, let me just hop out for a second. And it does say canola here, so yes, it did go back over it, so we're fine. We're all fine. Should be okay. Yeah, the one thing I really haven't got into, I did a little bit on Hawks Bay, which was my first map I did for season, was crop rotation. I really haven't really gotten into it. To me, it's just going to be like, well, it is what it is, kind of a thing. I should really get back into it because, I mean, it could, it could actually uh, goof up your yield quite a bit. I've seen some ratios where it's like uh, it goes from regular yield down to like 0.75 of a yield and sometimes up to 1.2% of a yield. So it's that's uh, that's at like 40% difference in a yield. It's quite a bit. Yeah, so this seed roll that we did, do have, and I'll get back on this for just a second here. Like I said, for the fields that we had last year, more than enough for what we had to do. But now the fields are getting bigger. Uh, yeah, I'm just not sure, but the problem is, 
I think I've seen the rest of their seed rolls. None of them fold up, so if they go bigger, uh, it's just going to be wider on the road. And with traffic, it could be a small issue. Now, the good thing is a lot of our fields are right next to one another. And the road that we just came down, uh, no traffic goes up and down that road. That's just the road really up to the cell phone tower. I do need to put a gate up across there because I don't, need, I don't want people driving up and down that road. That's kind of like a private road. But I also hate putting up gates because that means that's something I have to get out and open and close every time I want to go up and down certain roads. Me and gates don't get along because I, I, you know, my driving style, it's always 100 miles an hour and I don't want to wait for the gate to close or gate to open. I'm like, ah, it'll open in time and then it doesn't. And then disaster hits. All right, so I feel pretty good now. It's not taking me that long. Just making sure. I had to look back up there. I'm like, I do have the speed on times five, right? <laughs> it's not even 10 o'clock in the morning yet. And I got, I got a lot more done today than I thought I was going to before I got to noon. But definitely need to fertilize those big fields up there. Uh, should be able to. Like I said, that 33% should be from plowing in the grass. I'll fertilize, get it up to 66%, and then when I spread lime down and we seed the field, that should get up to 100%, so I don't have to worry about it at all during the summer. We got our combine situation kind of handled. Kind of disappointed that the Case International didn't have the horsepower uh, to even run the, uh, the headers that we had on it. But now looking back at it, that combine only held capacity was like 8,000 8, liters. Yeah, definitely going to be a lot better. Uh, I think the John Deere holds 12. Somewhere in there. And really I don't, I really haven't used a lot of John Deere stuff on my episodes on every Let's Play. I'm not really a big John Deere fan, as you probably noticed by now. And that's the odd thing because green is my favorite color, but as for the John Deere tractors and equipment, I don't know. I don't know if that's the same bus that's going around or if there's multiple buses. I don't know, but it seems like every time we, I see the road and the vehicle going by, it's the bus. Yeah, we'll have to actually see. Maybe I'll, I will see the field with uh, this seed drill. Those three up there. It's not taking me too long. And really, after I get done with those three fields, I'm not sure if I'm going to make any more fields for a while. I think I got enough fields to make crop and feed for the animals that we have. And really, selling crop is not where this farm's making the cash. The farm's making the cash by selling the trees and leasing out property. But it's fun to farm, so we do it. There we go. Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. Uh, tell you what, let's go back up to Elaine's. And we'll top off the seed roll. Because like I said, just made my mind that uh, I'm not going to swap out seed rolls this year, I don't think. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. We're not gonna, it's not going to take us too long to go ahead and take care of those fields. Uh, top me off. And I'm not really going through that much fertilizer. But since we're here, I don't mind helping out Elaine a little bit by giving her a little bit of cash for this uh, fertilizer and seed. Let's go ahead and bring this on up to those fields so we're kind of ready. 
Yeah, only 10 o'clock in the morning, and of course the days are getting longer, so I have to keep that in mind as well. Yeah, I think we can get uh, a lot of these fields taken care of today on the fifth day of spring, so that's not too bad. Same time as it was last year. Let me just go ahead and park this in here. I'll actually use the T6 to fertilize a field. Because that's what I used yesterday afternoon. I will decouple that, though, because I will have to pull our spreader with a case Puma. Um, let's take a trip on down to the factories. Just to get, just to see what the view looks like now. The trees should be, uh, have enough leaves on them for sure. Just checking out for traffic. Let's take a trip on down there. Let's see how the view looks now. Like I said, we can see these trees up here, how, uh, bloom that they are with some leaves. So, yeah, we... We put those trees in the fall, and then it was too late in the year in the, to have leaves on the trees. So, I just, yeah, it would be interesting to see. Do I have too many trees down here? Not enough trees, or does it seem just about right? I do have to come down here and take care of the factories. It's been a while. And the furniture factory is sitting there full of, uh, full of supplies. I'm pretty sure the carton factory is as well. I think the amount of trees we have here is probably just about right, doesn't, it's not really, I mean, you, you kind of want to block some of the view of, of the factory and the scrapyard. Let's take a trip on down here. Of course, adding the pond certainly added a little bit of uh, character to it. Probably should put a fence on the left-hand side. That's a pretty steep cliff over there. I got to go ahead and take care of that. Our small BGA. Yep, carton factory sitting idle. They're all sitting idle. Uh, even from this side here, it looks pretty darn good, I think. Yeah, I don't think I would change anything. Got a little bit of, a little bit of a beach that way. Uh, the workers can bring their families down and, uh, yeah, the families can spend time on the beach if they want. Nice clean water, take a, take a dive in. I do need to, I uh, never got to it during the winter, but, um, I do need to make another entryway into the furniture factory. Make another road going out that way, loop around, cut back up on the hill. But yeah, we definitely need to get on down here and take care of the furniture so this place can produce more. Our poor little Case International, after we got the T6, kind of just does some small stuff down here now and then uh, when he gets around to it. Uh, pallets, yeah, we're doing fine on pallets and boards. Yeah, we got a good stockpile there, so that's all all set to go. And three of our fields are set to go. We got them taken care of. We got some grass. Well, we hope it's growing. They haven't germinated yet. Uh, but we got a grass field now. Uh, then we did well, uh, sunflowers, yes, and then canola. So everything seems to be going along well. Uh, we just have our next three huge fields to take care of. Need to fertilize, lime, and then seed. Hopefully I can do that in the afternoon hours of day five of spring. But yeah, I think I'm going to head on back home. Uh, it's, it's too early for lunch, but I'm going to have to have lunch anyways so I, I can get started on those three fields and not have to take a break. So I just want to go around and check around here. Drive around. Sawmill looks nice and clean. All the snow's pretty much gone around here. Uh, the meat factory, they've been sitting kind of idle, but they should have some cows to take care of uh, this fall, actually. Uh, we'll have to sell some sell some of our cattle and get some new ones in. And there's the other side of our three fields over here, all looking nice and big. I was like, what the heck is that in my field? It's actually weeds. Yep, weeds. Uh, so that's going to do it for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching, as always. And I'll catch you next time right here in Green Mountain Forest. But until then, have a good one.